My name is Judy Block Jones. I grew up in Woodsfield, Ohio. I was the oldest of 11 children, and I was raised very Catholic. I attended St. Sylvester's School. I went to church every Sunday and to confession every other Saturday. I was baptized and married in this church. Our family's whole life evolved around the Catholic Church. I am not Catholic anymore. I moved away from Woodsfield after I graduated from high school. I got married and I have three really neat kids and now I have three of the most perfect grandchildren in the world. I would like to share my story that connects me to the sex abuse crisis within the Catholic Church and especially the abuse within the Steubenville Diocese. About 20 years ago, I learned that a close family member had been sexually abused by Father Robert A. Brown. He was our longtime parish priest at St. Sylvester's in Woodsfield. I later learned that several of my relatives were also sexually abused by this priest. After learning this, I was shocked, hurt, angry, sad, confused, but mostly angry. I couldn't stop thinking about it. And I wondered, why would Father Brown do such an awful thing, especially to those whom I love? I had many questions, and I had a hard time finding answers. No one seemed to care to talk about it. In the year 2002, when all the news came out about priests abusing kids, I couldn't stop reading and learning. I desperately searched for information about this issue. While I was watching the news one day, I noticed that there was an organization called SNAP. They were advocates and supporters of victims who had been sexually abused by priests. Somehow I got in touch with them, and I became involved with SNAP. I became the Steubenville SNAP leader in the late 2003. In the past five years, I have learned so much, and the more that I learned about the bad, deep abuse of by priests, the more I am motivated to reach out to victims and get these, the abuse of kids stopped. I have learned that Father Brown abused many boys. Mostly it happened around St. Sylvester's church and school, but mainly in the church rectory. That rectory must have been Brown's haven for abusing kids. I even learned that a few years ago, after Brown had retired to move to his newly built home in Woodsfield, some parish women cleaned the church rectory, and what they found shocked them. They had, there had been lots of alcohol and pictures. It was a mess. What they had found made these women realize that, yes, Father Brown had been abusing boys there for years. These women decided not to tell anyone about what they found so the secret was secure. Father Brown was located in Woodsfield at St. Sylvester's from 1951 until he died in 1991. In early 2004, I called the Steubenville Diocese and talked to Vicar General, Monsignor Kurt Chemo. I asked him if he had ever gotten any complaints of abuse against Father Robert A. Brown, who was located at St. Sylvester's. Chemo's reply was no. While being quite naive back then, I figured he must be telling me the truth. But it seemed strange that he didn't even have to take time to look Brown's file. In August of 2006, a press release came out from the Steubenville Diocese. It stated that they had a credible allegation against Father Brown and Paul Ditto. The abuse happened in the late 1970s. When I got the phone call of this news, I was in Walmart, jumping up and down. I thought, finally, some brave person made this diocese come forward about this abusive priest. Finally, the secret was out. Although I was completely shocked to hear that Paul Ditto was also in included in the complaint. But now that I realize it, Ditto was around the church and school the whole time that I was there and Brown's new retirement home was built right across the street from Ditto. What a setup. After hearing this diocese release, I immediately made arrangements to go to Ohio and do press events in Columbus, 
in his Steubenville. I wanted to reach out to anyone who might ha have been abused by Brown. This is when I learned the hard truth about this diocese and how they cover up the abuse of kids. When Kurt Chemo told me back in 2004 that they had received no complaints of sex abuse against Brown, he was actually lying to me. I have learned that yes, there were complaints about Brown even before my call to chemo in 2004. At this point in my work with survivors, I do not trust Bishop Conlon or any of the church leaders of this diocese. But something really good has come out of this work that I do with SNAP. I have met some of the most sincere, authentic, dear people, the survivors and family members who have suffered dearly because of this Steubenville Diocese abuse mess. They are terrific people. This diocese, and all who are part of it, is trying real hard to keep this dirt, their dirty secrets hidden. But that is not possible for them to do anymore. More survivors are coming forward and breaking their silence and getting help and not feeling alone. The secrets are being exposed one at a time. This sex abuse by Brown has reached deep in my heart and soul. He became a master at grooming kids to be his prey. He was a master at befriending family members and fooling the whole town of Woodsfield. He was good at what he did, and I'm not talking about being a good priest. He has a 50-year history of abuse. I can't even imagine how many kids were harmed by him. But I do believe the number is very high. The stories that I've heard are heartbreaking. It has also affected even a wider range than just his victims. It has affected family members and loyal parishioners who believe that this priest was God Almighty. The deceit and betrayal is the hardest to accept. And now that I have learned that there are so many priests all over the world who commit these awful crimes against kids, I will never stop reaching out to all who have been sexually abused by the Catholic clergy and leaders. And I will never stop working to expose every single perpetrator who has ever been assigned in this diocese. I can't. I believe that the corruption within this diocese will be exposed and that the survivors will be free from hurt and that kids and adults will be safe from this terrible crime of cover-up and sexual abuse. Thanks for listening. Bye.